Hi everybody, today I want to have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk about parallax, and this is a topic that I've covered in the past in previous tutorials. And let me show you what this effect is. I have a few pages that I'm going to demonstrate in this video, a few different layouts and formats that you can do on your canvas pages. But essentially the parallax effect is when you can have an image or an element on the screen and it stays stationary as opposed to the rest of the content on the screen. And so here's an example. I have this picture and this is an umbrella picture and it's actually a couple of pictures, but it looks like it's just one picture in the background and it gives the effect that all of this content that I have right here is floating on top of the image as I scroll through the page in Canvas. And you can have more than one picture. So here's another example. This element right here, the um, program learning goals, it looks like it wipes it from one image to the next. And then I have this other element and it wipes it to another image. So that's the parallax effect. It's this concept that I'm scrolling through the page and I have pictures on the page, but the pictures don't scroll up with the content. This picture stay stationary. And this is a really fun feature that you can use in Canvas. The only caveat is you need access to the theme editor or you need to work with somebody who has access to the theme editor. And then you simply need this little bit of code in order to add it to the CSS in your Canvas course. And once that's uploaded, then on any Canvas page, you can utilize these parallax effects. You can find this code on our supplementary website. There's a blog post dedicated entirely to parallax effects in Canvas. So grab the code from there. And I'll also link to the parallax tutorial, the video in the description below. So I created another page in order to demonstrate this parallax effect. So let me go over there. And what I did is I used Bootstrap to create two columns of content and the columns are exactly the same except for one column on the right doesn't have the parallax effect. It just has a regular image that scrolls up with the content. And then the column on the left will have the parallax effect. And so here I can see that in action. On one hand, the images just scroll up with the content. And on the other hand, you can see precisely the um, interaction and the parallax effect. And then at the bottom here, I accidentally kept the parallax effect and I thought that's actually a pretty cool effect. This is two different columns. And you can see as I highlight, it's, um, it's bootstrapped, so it's two columns. But when you put the parallax effect, it puts the, uh, the picture as stationary. And so it looks like it's really just one picture that spans the two columns, even though it technically is two different pictures. But that's a pretty interesting effect right there. And so this video is just me sharing a few different ideas. Once you get the parallax effect in your Canvas course and you start using it, I wanted to share some ideas on how you could use the parallax effect. So with this next page, what I did is I created a banner and the banner is a very large image with a gradient effect. And you can see as I scroll, I have these, these banners, these section dividers or separators. And as I scroll, they change colors as, as it goes from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. And you notice these section dividers at the top have a very much uh, green and green blue. And the ones at the bottom are more bold and blue. And all I did is I went into either Photoshop or PowerPoint and I created a gradient effect with various colors on the screen. And I uploaded this to Canvas. And then I specified with the parallax effect that I only want this to be 50 pixels tall. And then I want it to span the width of the screen. And that way it gives it the seamless effect that as I scroll, then they change colors. In reality, what I'm doing is I'm taking that little box and that little box is scrolling across the picture. And so it changes the gradients that way. And I thought that was a really interesting effect. That's different than if I were to use this picture of the landscape, for example. That's a lot of fun too, but then using this as a separator for content and just uploading a, a large high resolution image that is gradient, that could be really interesting as well. Next, I'm gonna play around with a whole bunch of pictures. Just put just a bunch of pictures onto my Canvas page and play around with various parallax effect options. And I did this in the initial tutorial as well. So here's my umbrella image from Unsplash. And then I have another image that doesn't have the parallax effect. And so you can see the effect is that, yeah, I have the parallax effect on this first image and it looks like the second image wipes up from there. And that's different than here's another parallax image and then here's, a, here's that same image, that second image, but this one has the parallax effect. And so you can see that the little window scrolls up through the image. And that's as opposed to this one where it's stationary. So that's kind of cool. And then I looked at, well, how, how else can we apply this effect? Here's a bucolic shot of a pasture, mountains, and hills. And this would be springtime. And then I can wipe up 
and I can show what this would look like in summer. And you can see that parallax effect right there. And then here's what it would look like in the fall time and then the winter time. So that's kind of an interesting effect. And then I can use a separator, of a content separator, to kind of wipe the screen, to reset it. So here we are again. And then I can use a separator to transition from springtime to wintertime. And so that's a really interesting effect as well. And then I can wipe up again. Here's springtime. And then I have a little window of what summer would look like. And then I can compare springtime to fall or autumn. And then finally I have springtime and then I can see a peek into what winter would look like. So that's very interesting. You know, think of ways that you could use that with your course content, especially imagery. Now here's a more simple page layout. I have a course overview and then I use the images just as embellishment, just to separate the content a little bit so that we can have a break. And in reality, it looks like the content is separating the image, but this is really just two images. And so that's a pretty fun effect as well. Very simple and it's a way that you can distinguish one section of content from another section using imagery. And it's pretty catchy too. Next, I have an entire tutorial dedicated specifically to text overlays with parallax images. And what that means is that I have a parallax image right here and then I have a text box. And so you can have text elements and you can have as much text as you want. You can put a box around the text like what I did here. There's a gray box. And as I scroll down, we'll see other examples of text overlay. And here I use the background color to put in a dark aspect for this section of text. And then I have this overlay over the image as well. And this is just text, so I can change the text to whatever I want. Here I say scroll up, and then here I say keep scrolling, and then I scroll down, and then I say have fun. And so, yeah, it is pretty fun. And here's another example of how I might use both text overlays and parallax in an actual Canvas course. So I might have my course overview, and then I might break up the content with a quote. And here I made this picture darker so that I can have light text on top of it. And sometimes you can lighten up the picture so that you can have dark text on top of it. So it's a great way for students to be going through the course content and just take a breather and have a nice quote from you or to emphasize a certain concept. This is another example of a dark overlay over the image. So I darkened up the image and then I put light text on top of it. And finally, here's a lightened overlay with dark text on top of that as well. And then I thought, Canvas is very bright. By default, the background's always white and with dark text on top of it. What if we made everything dark and put light text? And adding the parallax, adding some overlays. And so I tried that. I took this course overview section and I put a dark background and lightened up the text. And then all the images, I darkened them up. And so you can see it's a different look and feel. It's quite different from Canvas's normally bright layout and interface. This is very dark. And here I tried something else. I put everything in, within a section so you can see that the image doesn't actually span the entire width of the page like these images do. And so I can have it only span a part of the width of the page if I wanted to. And of course, this is adjustable. If I were to expand the global navigation and come up here and expand the course navigation, then all of the pages adjust accordingly. And that's the reason why when you're using a parallax effect, you want a very high resolution image because by default, it stretches the image to the entire width of the screen, whether you're using it or not. Because you'll notice, see, look at these headphones and the computer down here. And when I expand the course navigation and expand the global navigation, the image doesn't actually move. The image is fixed there. And so if you have a small image and it stretches to be the entire width of the page, then it's going to be very pixelated. So you want a very large image to work with. And of course on mobile, it doesn't matter so much, but a lot of students are working on computers and they have very large monitors. And so we want to really accommodate when we're doing the parallax effect for those large screens as much as we can. Yeah, and so this is what Canvas would look like if it had more of a dark interface. And so that's something that you can do. And I have another tutorial that's dedicated exclusively to changing the background colors of elements, whether it's a text box or whether it's the background element of the entire Canvas page. So I hope this gives you some ideas of how you might use parallax effects in your Canvas courses. And I want to end this by emphasizing some web design elements for when you're doing something like a parallax effect on a website. In this case, the website is Canvas, but it could be any website. 
So first of all is you don't want to put style before content. The content should always be your priority. And especially in a classroom setting, content is always king. Next, you want to keep it user friendly as possible. This is a pretty flashy interaction, but at the same time, it, you kind of want it to stay in the background. You want to make the experience enjoyable, but also as clear as possible. Now the navigation and the flow should also be kept simple as possible. And in Canvas, we're mostly just scrolling from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. And we want to make sure that that's obvious and not distract the students from that. Now I think a really important part of Parallax is to get students to encourage them to scroll. This is a fun interaction and it encourages them to go from the top of the page to the bottom of the page by giving them something a little bit fancy, something nice to look at. And with that said, in your class you probably want to keep the most important information readily available at all times at the top of the page, at least in the top half of the page. We know that if students are going to read only a portion of the page, which we hope that they read all of the content, but if they were only to read a portion of the page, it's going to be at the top part of the page. And so again, I think that that's a good use of parallax is to try and get them down to the bottom of the page. If they're at the bottom of the page, they're more likely to read the content at the bottom of the page. If they stay at the top of the page, they're definitely not going to read any content at the bottom of the page. Now we also want to consider the web design perspective of our Canvas page and incorporating Parallax into our Canvas page. So Parallax scrolling should make reading and navigating the course um, easier for students. And consequently, it should make it easier for the group to complete their tasks. It definitely shouldn't be a barrier or something distracting, but I think when done right, then I think it can make it easier for them to navigate through the content and it'll make it a more interesting and pleasant experience for them. And without being ostentatious, we do want to capture their attention and we want them to spend as much time in our classroom as they need in order to get the materials that they need so that they can master the course content. So these are a few ideas that I had in terms of page layout and using Parallax to try something different. I'm going to put all of these pages on Canvas Commons as well, so you can download it from there. And for more of the nuts and bolts of how to apply the parallax effect and how to apply overlays, and even if you want to explore Bootstrap, take a look at the links in the description below, and I'm going to link out to various tutorials that I've done explaining behind the scenes of how to get these interactive elements onto your Canvas pages. So as always, have fun with this, and until next time... Happy Digging and Morning!